Hello everyone, welcome to the Game Design Perspective. I'm Santi. In my years of experience, I've actually dealt with Microsoft a couple of times. Maybe not personally, but in the studios I worked on before, we had to work directly with Microsoft. If you guys remember, Metro Exodus was actually announced on a Microsoft press conference. And while I was working at Twin Sons, we talked with Microsoft a lot. The reason we had to talk with Microsoft in Twin Sons, I cannot disclose exactly. Today, maybe later, I'll be able to talk about in detail about what happened there. But we talked a lot about with Microsoft and I interact with the Microsoft people at Twin Sons Corp. And I learned a lot about how Microsoft operated. Uh, this is a little bit of an educated opinion on where Xbox is currently now and where they could go to save the brand. The first thing is that currently they've spent billions of dollars trying to increase their portfolio of studios. The amount of money they spent, if Xbox was making profit in like an ideal situation, it would take decades, decades to get their money back. And at their current speed of revenue, I really believe that if they keep going this path, by the time Microsoft recovers their money, you watching this video and I would probably be dead. So that's a very precarious situation to be in. It's like not a nice place to be. The first problem Microsoft is facing is a problem of brand image. And all this started when they announced the Xbox One in 2013. They announced it as an online only console. Very pretentiously said that people that do not have internet or do not want to have their console connected to the internet could play on Xbox 360. And they were kind of just saying, you don't own anything. This is our just license and you cannot even lend a friend a, a physical copy of a game. It just doesn't work. And of course they backpedaled, but they never recovered from this. The Xbox One did not, they lost a lot of their market during that generation. The PlayStation 4 ate them up. And then Nintendo came with the Switch and changed the whole game. Again, like Nintendo does. Their second problem is Game Pass. So the first thing is that Game Pass is not Netflix. Microsoft is having a little bit of trouble understanding that. When you consume content on Netflix, on like TV shows or movies, it's not the same market, it's not the same process, and it's not the same budgets. Video game budgets are getting way higher than movies sometimes. Uh, so you're spending more money and you're getting a little bit more desperate to make money. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's pretty hard to see. They keep putting their games day one on Game Pass and yeah, it's nice to hear and it looks like very nice for the consumer and it kind of is. But the reality is that it's not bringing new subscribers. What is happening is that people are subscribing to Game Pass for one month, play what they need to play for the price of one month of Game Pass, playing the new AAA they release, for example, Starfield, and then they get out. They stop paying it. That's it. So it's not bringing new users, it's just making the users that use Game Pass inconsistent. The other thing is that it reduces the sales, the actual sales information of their exclusives, which is what happened to Tango Gameworks. When uh, Hi-Fi Rush didn't bring the numbers that it should have to Game Pass, it might have affected Microsoft's decisions to, to close down Tango. I don't think Game Pass is properly managed, to be honest. I think what Game Pass needs is consistency, and that's the last thing you have on Game Pass. Games come in and out every month, their whole library is not there, and people are not consistently in Game Pass because they don't see the value of consistently being in Game Pass. So the service of Game Pass itself is not working. That business plan is not working right now. But a lot of developers are saying it, right? Like the time for Game Pass is long past, right? And then finally, uh, and this is a little bit the thing that I learned of, of working with studios and dealing with Microsoft is that their studio management is not ideal. It might not sound that way, but they're actually very pro developer. They allow developers to do many times, not always, but they allow developers to do whatever they want. Sometimes they will give projects to studios. They kind of allow developers to do whatever, you know? And what happens is that many times they don't have a cohesive library. They don't have a cohesive plan on attacking the market year by year. So it sounds good on paper, but it's not the best idea. And the second thing is that Nintendo and, my, and Sony uh, have 
something called satellite studios. And these are studios that don't have individual projects. Like they're there for support. It's a very senior team of developers that will go around and help the other studios work their problems and keep development moving forward. And what happens is that this stops games from being in development hell, which is one of the reasons why you don't see, you see development tasks that can get long, but you don't see video games from Nintendo or Sony getting into development hell often. So Microsoft does not have that. So every developer is on their own. He's on their own on finding people to, to hire, assembling a team or managing their team or getting specific skills. They are on their own. Yeah, Microsoft will give them money, but the reality is that they are on their own. For example, where I was working at Twinsons Corp, we worked with the developers from Satellite Studios of big video games. Like, and I'm, it's hard to be bigger than this. So these satellite studios brought BFX artists, animators, producers that helped the development keep moving forward and at steady pace. Microsoft, I have not seen Microsoft do, do this, which helps kind of teams get into development hell from time to time, right? Where are most of Microsoft projects? It's taking forever for Microsoft to release a game. And finally, it, it, the final problem and what I think is actually probably the worst, and we saw the consequences of this recently, is that, yeah, okay, Microsoft allows developers to do whatever they want many times. But when they don't, they really screw up. They will go and give a project, a big project to a team that is not equipped to develop it. The perfect example is Arcane Austin, right? That they went and they developed Redfall. Let's get this straight. Arcane Austin was a single player studio with their own engine that was not made for multiplayer. And the first thing they did is like, hey, you're going to make a live service multiplayer project open world, which is literally not what Arcane is for, especially the Austin team that is smaller than the French team. So the first thing that Arcane has to do is like, hey, our engine doesn't work for this. We're going to adopt Unreal Engine. So the team, does, the team has to adopt a new engine completely to make this project. And then they are not equipped to develop on the time that Microsoft needed a AAA multiplayer first-person shooter live service game. They were not equipped for that. And still, Microsoft assigned it to them. And then I'm going to say about Playground Games. Playground Games is a fantastic studio. I interview with people there. They're fantastic. They're amazing. I actually interviewed for the Fable project as a senior quest designer. And they were wonderful people. They were wonderful, very smart developers at Playground Games. But Playground Games and Playgrounds Games technology, their engine, their software, is built for Forza Horizon, not for a Fable game, not for an action RPG. And you couldn't pick more different projects. Just think about just the fact that what you're controlling one is a car and the other is a human. Not even on that. And still, Microsoft just put Fable on Playground. They might have asked for it. I That aspect, I don't know. And still, Microsoft should have been aware of this. I mean, like, hey, maybe you're not the best team to make a new Fable. But they did. So those are the three problems that Microsoft has. So what is the solution for this? Well, the showcase host like that they just showed on like June 9th, 2024, that showcase showed promise. Show promise because it showcased a lot of games. It showcased a lot of games from Microsoft Game Studio. But these are just trailers, and trailers are made in a vacuum. They are especially curated to look great every single time. The trailer for Metro Exodus was literally pre-programmed inputs just so that it looked perfect. But that's it. That's, it's just trailers. We do not know the quality of these games. So even though the showcase shows promise, it's not the solution. It definitely isn't. So the first thing is, my opinion, again, not to be anti-consumer, but it's not sustainable that games are day one on Game Pass. It is just not sustainable for Microsoft. They need to backpedal that, go a little bit more traditional in that sense, and start selling you games that you own. Second thing, Microsoft needs to start investing in highly senior teams that work as satellite studios for support. When someone is struggling, when a team is struggling with a project, they have a satellite team that is ready to support them in whatever they need. 
Microsoft needs to start investing on this instead of just buying a bunch of studios. That's where money should be going. I swear, I, I like these satellite studios is such a lifesaver. People don't underestimate how much work they do. And finally, and this is a big one. This is the biggest one. Microsoft should not abandon the console market. But it needs to focus on the PC market. What do I mean? Right now, the Xbox is an isolated operating system and architecture. Even though it's a PC, technically, their operating system and their, and their console itself it still needs to go through regulations for every game to go in and, needs, uh, and pass their testing. And every game needs to be optimized and it needs a specific build for Microsoft, for Xbox. And it's not the same as the PC one. It, they're completely different. So every game needs to optimize and make a specifically or a console build for Microsoft, which makes no sense. 99% of video games is developed on Windows. They are developed on Windows. The only time this changed a little bit is when Unity released originally, Unity Engine. And it was an exclusive to Mac. And a lot of people said, oh, Unity Engine is great. Let's start developing on Mac. And it didn't work. Unity backpedaled that and became a Windows engine as well. And there is a reason for that, because most games are developed on Windows, which is a Microsoft property. So what is Xbox doing? Instead of creating their own architecture, they should be merging these markets. So I'm not saying Xbox should not exist, and I'm not saying that the console should not exist, but what I'm saying is that it should be a PC. The Xbox should be a PC with an interface that works on a TV. If I make a build on Windows, it should run on Xbox. Not just that, I would even say that it should be interfaced with Steam. They need and then release their own games on the marketplace in the console, but they should it should be a PC and merge those markets. It would be the most pro-consumer thing in the world. It would be the most progressive move they could make. And it would bring a bunch of people that would welcome this open market. So that's my solutions for Microsoft. And I think the last one is radical. But I really think their next console should not be necessarily a console. It should be a PC on these guys. And the operating system of Microsoft, it should not, or for Xbox, should not be there. The operating system should be just Windows. And if I make a build for Windows, should run on an Xbox. And the Microsoft Store can interface with Steam and then start actually making your games for Xbox and PC and sell them. It would be a big deal. It would be a big moment for the video game industry. Like every single developer would put their game on Xbox. No questions asked. Even Sony would be like, okay, yeah. Sony's releasing their games on Windows through Steam. It's there. The answer is there. Their next console needs to be a PC in these guys. I'm Santi. This is the Game Design Perspective. Am I crazy? Do you find this ridiculous? Let me know. Tell me off in the comments below or tell me what you think or if you would like that or not, if my solutions make sense. <laughs> anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Have a good one.